We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. The more contact you have with strongly narcissistic individuals, the more you realize that these are people who have determined that it's extremely important to show themselves as being a really strong individual. They don't want you to know what their flaws and weaknesses are. In fact, they greatly fear those being exposed. Instead, they try to give the impression that you're supposed to be more like me. And they can have an agenda. They can be very free in letting you know where you go wrong. But you know, when you take a look at what it means to be a strong individual, uh, it's, uh, there's, there's so much that they simply don't understand. Your strength is not just the result of your personal pronouncements, but your strength is illustrated in the way that you manage life, especially in moments of conflict. And what I'd like to do today is I want to go through 10 different indicators, 10 signs that narcissists, despite their pronouncements to the opposite, are quite emotionally weak. This is something they don't want you to think, but the proof is in their behavior. Let me see if we can run through this. And by the way, it's so essential for you to see this because they want you to think you're the weak one and they want, uh, no, they want nothing to do with admitting their own flaws. But let's take a look at what we're, uh, what we're examining here. First, one of the signs that a narcissist is truly operating from a place of emotional weakness is these are people who will not set the stage for love and for peace. Narcissists bring discord to virtually any relationship. They see relationships as competition. So if they approach you with the idea that they want to have uh, love, it's very superficial and short-lived. If they uh, want uh, to define what peace means, then what they mean is, you're doing what I want you to do. They don't understand those two words or those two concepts. A second sign that these are individuals operating from a position of weakness is that they waste emotional energy both on minutia and on already fixed circumstances. These are people who uh, uh, fret easily. They can be prone toward anxiety. Many times that anxiety shows up as agitation or irritability. They're unable to accept flaws and imperfections. That's not the sign of a strong person. A third ingredient that's a sign of their weakness is that their anger is terribly ugly. Uh, yeah, now one of the things that we can say is you can tell a person's true inner strength by watching how they manage their anger. Narcissists will go off the rail. Their anger can be loud and brash and insulting and condescending. Sometimes they go into a passive aggressive mode where they just uh, more or less imply through their uh, deliberate non-cooperation that they don't deem you to be worth anything. They can hold you in contempt. They don't have a governor on their anger and uh, they, they can come across as strong, but that strength is actually part of their internal emotional weakness. A fourth sign of their emotional weakness is they, they will constantly gripe and carp and complain. Those kind of qualities come easily. They're uh, very, di it's very difficult to keep them satisfied. And again, that's part of their emotional weakness. A fifth sign that they have is that they're cap uh, they're, they're incapable of maneuvering through nuance or unique circumstances. They bring a very powerful black and white, all or nothing agenda to the equation. And as far as they're concerned, when you say, well, I think differently, or this circumstance has some ingredients that you might not have considered, they're only interested in one thing, and that is my comfort. They don't want to understand the world around them. That's part of their weakness because uh, they don't know how to engage in that kind of nuanced way of thinking. A sixth sign of their emotional weakness is that to them, it's virtually impossible to approach differences logically. 
How many times have you engaged with these individuals uh, about some of the ways that you differ and you feel like you've just run into a brick wall? They can be strongly opinionated. They can be closed-minded. They, they kind of operate with the notion that says, don't confuse me with the facts. And when it comes to breaking down some of the differences, and they don't even necessarily, necessarily have to be under the category of right versus wrong, but just differences, it's like, I can't get through. I can't talk to that. They're too weak. They're too insecure to uh, consider the thoughts and the perspectives of someone that's not them. A seventh indicator of their emotional weakness is that they have an absurd inclination toward defensiveness. You know, why are you so threatened when people come toward you and say things and do things that you don't like? but they go heavily into a justification mode in the midst of differences or conflicts. They rationalize their behaviors, no matter how inappropriate they are. They deflect whenever you try to confront them about things. They go into blame shifting, and that's a virtual guarantee. They project much of their own internal strain onto you. That's part of their defensiveness, and all of that implies I'm too weak to listen to people. I'm too weak to receive input. I don't know what to do with that either. An eighth indicator of their emotional weakness is they'll set up drama and then they'll complain about the results. Now, what I mean by that is they may ask you loaded questions like, well, why did you do this this way? Or uh, why can't we do it in, the, in another way? And they're not seeking information. They just want to hear your response so they can come and clobber you. Or they won't follow through on promises to make group efforts go well. Uh, they might make requests or demands from you, and then they'll sabotage you as you try to uh, to fulfill those requests. They'll lecture you, and then they'll accuse you of not being a good listener. That's what I mean when I say they set up drama, and then they complain about the results. That's not the sign of a really strong person, is it? A ninth indicator of their internal weakness is they can be very dishonest, when they have to talk about their own personal hurts. Uh, if, if there is something that's been in their life that has been embarrassing or frustrating or uh, just uh, tough to deal with, rather than thinking, you know, there are lots of factors that go into it. Let's break it down and I want to see if I can learn from some of the things that I've been through. But instead, what they do is if they have hurts, it's like, well, I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm weak. And so they have to build a false narrative to make themselves look better than that. And it's like, I don't want to have to identify as a regular human being. That's part of their weakness. And then a tenth indicator of their emotional weakness is they're unwilling to let go of grudges. Keep in mind that that implies they hold on to grudges quite quite readily. They these are individuals that tend to cling to, on to contempt. They don't apologize uh, whenever they do something wrong, and if you apologize to them, it's never good enough. They uh, utilize a lot of character assassination. They'll run smear campaigns. They don't let go of grudges because they just think, well, you owe me and you didn't give me what I want. When you look over this list of 10 signs of a narcissist's emotional weaknesses, you realize that those are, are indicators that says these, these people don't have inner strength. Now, they may bring a lot of bravado to the equation. They may bring, like I mentioned, a lot of entitlement in their relationship with you. They want to be in high control, and in their controlling ways, they may give the impression that they know everything, but they don't. They can be haughty as if they're uh, the, the, uh, the people who are the superior ones, but that's not strength. You see, there are certain things that narcissists fail to come to terms with. When you have inner strength, uh, first, one of the, uh, the things that we can say is it's typified by being willing to talk about how you feel weak. Uh, um, people who must appear strong uh, really are not strong. A strong person could say, yeah, here are my mistakes, or these are some of the things that I don't know. I, I need to figure that out, don't I? Uh, they can't come to terms with that. Or another thing that they can't come to terms with, they can't consistently be honest about their own mixed resume. But by that, I mean each one of us is a mixture of pluses and minuses. They want you to know the pluses, but let's not talk about the minuses. 
They are unable to manage differences with civility. That's part, uh, that's something that the civility is something that they just have not been able to master at all. They're unable to practice patience, which actually is a nice way of saying they don't have good self-restraint. And then add to that, they don't really prioritize kindness and decency, maybe here and there, if it'll allow them to get something that they want, but that's not a natural inclination towards them. Uh, another thing they don't really understand is uh, they don't understand the need to be a learner. They don't, they don't want to learn. Uh, they want you to know about what they uh, proclaim, and that's enough. They don't like to seek out new opinions. They don't like to consider ideas that are different from themselves. Uh, uh, yet another thing that they have not come to terms with is the necessity of encouragement. They're real good at criticizing, like I say, but uh, one of the best ways to show that you can be a, a strong person is to look for the good in other individuals. That's something that has just completely blown right by them. They don't see failures or miscues or mistakes as an opportunity for growth. Uh, to them, that's, that's something that's shameful. And if you do mistakes, then they'll shame you. If they do mistakes, they want to cover it up and blame. Uh, they are unable to accept the fact that they're, they're not able to control everything. They're, uh, they don't have intuitive thinking. Uh, but instead, what they do is they just give raw reactions. They don't draw upon inner, uh, well-conceived ideas and beliefs. They're not fair-minded. Uh, they don't uh, value calm reasoning, and they just can't come to terms with the fact that they're going to be perpetually imperfect. It's like, I don't want anybody to see that. So like I say, narcissists want to give the impression that they've got it together, when in fact, all of these evidences that I'm talking about reveal that there's a real strong sense of weakness that they have. And the greatest weakness is the unwillingness and the inability to say, I still need to grow. I'm a, I'm a work in progress. Would you work with me? That's something that we do here on Team Healthy. But as you see that that's what they carry, and then they try to falsely put uh, blame and shame and, uh, and guilt onto you for not being like them, I'm hoping you don't buy into that one bit. Part of your strength is to say, I'm, I, I am going to be a learner, and I am going to be someone who can be honest about who I am. Wouldn't it be nice if that narcissistic person can say, hey, I'll join you. But in the absence of that, stay on your path anyway. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. The more you see it, then the, the more you can't unsee it, and that's part of your growth. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button and the notification bell that goes along with it, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more videos coming toward you. I know that many of you would have a desire to seek out some therapy. You know that I've been sponsored for years now by the people at BetterHelp.com. There's a link below that can take you to their website. Uh, and uh, if you do, then you'll get a 10% discount on your first month. Uh, it's just a matter of filling out a few forms. I've had lots of good uh, feedback from individuals who have sought that. It's popular. It's accessible. It's affordable. So please seek that out if that's your need. You know that I have my uh, my uh, on, my online classes. It's like signing up for an online course uh, where each course has multiple videos and uh, written documents, guided questions. They're very extensive. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me about establishing your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We have my webinars that have already been produced, but you can still go back and purchase as well as our podcast, our uh, uh, website with many articles, my books, so plenty of resources. I truly appreciate it when you let me be on the path with you. Narcissists in their attempt to be strong and above everybody else illustrate that inwardly they're like a weak little child that hadn't figured out life very well. I hope that you can figure it out so that you stay away from their clutches. And in the process, I hope that that positions you to be a person of dignity, respect, and civility, which are the ingredients that lead to peace.